कुंज बिहारी जय राधा गोपीजन बल्ल गिरिवर धारी गोपीजन बल्ल गिरिवर शोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जमुना तीरा जमुना तीरा जय हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 ताई गौर हरि हरि गो हरि गो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु
गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल नमो ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रस्थाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवानी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यादिशतारिने एट वन टाइम पांडवस एंड कौरवस there's two line of the same family got into a terrible conflict and it came to a situation that they had to fight a battle pandavas uh, here are the devotees of krishna and Kauravas, headed by Durjadhan, are opposed to Krishna. Like, we know why Krishna came to protect the devotees and annihilate the demons. And through his entire pastime, he established that principle. His devotees, although they are persecuted, they are troubled by the non-devotees, the demons. Not non-devotees. Non-devotees can also be innocent. But there, are, there is a difference between the innocent who are not devotees as yet. But in course of time, when they get into proper association, they become devotees. But the other group, no matter how much they are reminded about Krishna's supreme position, but still they don't want to surrender to Krishna, even when Krishna himself comes to advise them, guide them, they don't want to accept him. So Kauravas fall in that category. Actually, in order to stop that battle, Krishna himself went to the to Durjadhan with a very, uh, very uh, reasonable proposal. Not only reasonable, a very uh, sincere proposal, you can say. You see, the condition or consideration was whether the Pandavas will get back their kingdom. Okay, so background is uh, two brothers, Dhritarashtra and Pandu. Dhritarashtra is the elder brother, but he is blind, born blind. So a blind person cannot become the king. So Dhritarashtra was not coronated or he did not succeed the throne. And his younger brother Pandu became the king. But they had very good relationship, both the brothers. Pandu really took care of his elder brother, a lot of love and affection. That's the thing with the good people. Good people are always good. All their behavior, all their activities are good for the benefit of others. So Pandu was taking care of Dhritarashtra very nicely and Dhritarashtra also was very affectionate towards Pandu. But Pandu had an untimely death and <coughs> his five sons were brought up in the kingdom, uh, in the in the capital, uh, in the like in a kind of rather neglected atmosphere, and Dhritarashtra, he himself couldn't become a king. 
he was hoping that his son would become the king because the Vedic culture is, Vedic custom is that the eldest son inherits the property of the father. Unlike today's culture, now the property is divided among all brothers and sisters also. And as a result, and then that, so this is how the property becomes fragmented. Then they have their children. So then whatever is the fragment, that is divided among them. Uh, so this is how it, it uh, continues to become more and more fragmented. Whereas in the Vedic culture, the thing, the assets remain intact. Eldest brother inherits it. So, although the el eldest brother inherits it, he doesn't deprive his younger brothers. Uh, he, like the eldest brother, like the father, takes care of the younger brothers. And younger brothers uh, also are given assignments. Mm. Like say for example, the eldest brother became the king and he would make the younger brothers the the uh, the governors and give other res important responsibilities and anyway so in Dhritarashtra although he was the eldest brother uh, elder of these two but he could not inherit the kingdom because he was blind now, the Vedic names are also very relevant, uh, indicating the personality and character of the person. So the name Dhrita, Dhrita means holding on to, and Rashtra means kingdom. One who is holding on to his kingdom, although he is not qualified, but he is uh, holding on to. So Dhritarashtra thought that he, at least he couldn't become a king, his son would become a king. But his, before his son was born, Pandu's son was born. So by birthright, Pandu's son actually became the king, the, in, the successor to the throne. And so when Pandu died and these five children of Pandu were uh, being taken care of in the royal palace. But there, there was a lot of envy. Because Dhritarashtra's son, eldest son Durjanhan, he couldn't become a king. And besides that, mm -hmm. all the five brothers were extremely good-natured extremely qualified, extremely talented. So that made Duryodhana even more envious. And besides that, Bhima, he was very powerful. And he became a bully. Like, there, although there were hundred brothers, but Bhima would uh, always harass them. Like when they would climb up a tree, so he would shake the tree and make them fall from the tree. <laughs> when they would go for a swim, then he would uh, push them down under water. <laughs> so this is how, like the way the children play, they would, uh, be naturally would display his strength. And he became sort of a bully, so that became the cause of even greater envy and anger and discontentment. So from the childhood they developed this, Durjadhan developed this resentment towards these five cousins of his. And on top of everything their nature was so good everybody would admire them. They would always sing the glory of this, oh see, Yudhishthir is so good. Uh, Bhima is so powerful. Uh, Arjun is such a gentleman. <laughs> and without speaking, they would actually display their attitude to the Duryodhana. 
he is so envious. He is so narrow-minded. He is so mean. So Duryodhan could not tolerate that. The Pandavas are being glorified and they are being uh, criticized. Pandavas were admired, uh, they are being insulted. Pandavas were so powerful and they are weaklings. <laughs> not weaklings, but uh, they are not as powerful as they are. So as a result of that, Duryodhan, even in, that, in his childhood, tried to kill Bhima. But no matter how much one tries to harm a devotee, uh, he can't, because Krishna always takes care of his devotees. Bhima, Duryodhan actually gave Bhima poison with the food. Sweets were made with deadly poison, snake poison. Bhima became unconscious, so they tied him up by hands and feet and threw him in the river. And uh, carried by the river, Bhima went to Pataluloka, lower planetary system, where the serpents live, snakes, the world of the snakes. And Bhima fell on those snakes when they were playing. His body fell and the snakes became upset. They started to bite him. Now he was given snake poison and now the snake started to bite him. So what happened? The snake bites acted as an antidote and Bhima regained his consciousness. And he didn't like it at all that the snakes were biting him. So he snapped his uh, the ropes that bind him, bound him and he started to kill all those snakes. So the news reached the king of the snakes that a human child is killing all the snakes. So he became curious. Who is that human child came into this loka, our kingdom, and he is killing the snakes. So out of curiosity he came with the minister and he recognized that it was Bhima. They had some relationship. Bhima was the son of the wind god, Pavandev. So he recognized Bhima and very affectionately he took him to his palace. And there he gave Bhima uh, nectar to drink. The nectar from the lower region. And Bhima, he was so fond of eating and drinking that he drank eight pots of nectar. <laughs> and drinking so much nectar, he slept for seven days. <laughs> and he, he acquired the strength of 10,000 elephants. Even as a child, Bhima had the strength of 10,000 elephants. So here we can see, like they tried to harm Bhima, kill him, but what happened? Bhima became even more powerful. So <clears throat> then they tried to burn them in a house of Shelak. And at that time Pandavas actually escaped digging a tunnel. And they thought uh, that the palace is not a safe place for them to go. So they were just wandering around. And then it was the Sayambhara ceremony of Draupadi. So Vasudev came, who is their grandfather actually. Vasudev came and told them that they should go to that. He didn't say anything, he just said, <coughs> you all go and participate. Now in that Sayambara ceremony, 
Arjun actually won Draupadi. So at that time, huh, they recognized that these are the Pandavas. The Pandavas were not dead. Because that kind of huh, hitting the target, huh, only Arjun could do. Because it was a, in practically an impossible task. There was a fish uh, high up, kept high, placed high up above, and one had to shoot the fish, the eye of the fish, by uh, passing the arrow uh, through a rotating disc. The disc was rotating, there was a hole in that, and so you can see what a... And not only looking up there, but looking down on, a ref, on the reflection. So uh, Arjun could only hit that target. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they suspected that this must be Arjun, and then eventually it was uh, disclosed that yes. Uh, Pandavas were not dead, Pandavas were alive. So then the members, the elder members of the family, uh, of the royal family, decided that they should be given half of the kingdom. Although Yudhishthir was the, uh, the, the inheritor, but anyway, so they were happy, okay. And what kind of half was, what kind, what portion was given? The desert part of the kingdom was given to them. But when the Pandavas settled down there, the desert became a paradise. I mean, to turn a desert into paradise is not really impossible. How many of you have gone to Dubai? Uh, didn't they turn the desert into paradise? So if they can do it, why the Pandavas couldn't do it? <laughs> and of course they did it in a different way. Anyway, uh, they did it with their money. Uh, whereas Pandavas did that with their pious activities, pious deeds. And the pious deeds are more precious than money. So that's why try to acquire pious deed and don't acquire sinful deeds. Sinful deed takes you to minus and pious deeds takes you to plus. So the Pandavas got the kingdom and their kingdom became so prosperous, so flourishing and so opulent that Durjodhan became envious. Uh, as we discussed yesterday, uh, during the Rajasuya Jagga of Yudhishthir Maharaj, Durjodhan uh, came and he became so envious seeing their opulence. So, Durjodhan, in a deceitful game of dice, defeated them, took away the, their kingdom and everything uh, even they uh, won in that game Draupadi, their wife, and insulted her in public assembly. And then finally, the Pandavas were banished from the kingdom, uh, banished into the forest for 12 years and one year of incognito. So after 13 years, when they came back, uh, and they naturally claimed their kingdom. Durjodhan refused to give that kingdom back. He said without a battle, he is not going to give that kingdom. So many senior members uh, of the family and saintly personalities, the sages, came and advised. Vasudev came and told Durjodhan, just give them their rightful share. Mm. Don't get into this battle. 
Duryodhan didn't listen. Maitre Rishi came and advised that give them their kingdom. Duryodhan wouldn't listen. Their mother advised, give them their kingdom. Duryodhana would listen. So finally, Krishna came with a proposal. Okay, you don't have to give them half the kingdom. You don't have to give them their kingdom back. Give them just five villages. And avoid this war. Duryodhana would listen. Not only that, he wanted to arrest Krishna. He thought that now Krishna is alone here, so we'll arrest him uh, and keep him in the prison. So Krishna is the main strength, Pandavas. So if without Krishna, they'll become weak. So we can very easily win them. So, uh, in the in the assembly hall Duryodhan's soldiers surrounded Krishna in order to arrest him. So at that time Krishna showed his universal form. And being afraid they all ran away. But as it said that <coughs> A wicked person do not take good advice. A wicked person do not resort to right activity. So Duryodhan, in spite of seeing Krishna's universal form, who can ever have any doubt that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God? But what was Duryodhan's response? Oh, it's a magic trick. Uh, he displays some magic. Uh, it's not uh, nothing special about it. Anyway, so the battle became inevitable. Mm. Not that the Pandavas wanted to fight, but Duryodhana was adamant to fight the battle. So, so that's why uh, Duryodhana. Mm, and Arjun is now facing the, the opponent in the enemy line. So that is the battle of Kurukshetra. And why this battle of Kurukshetra is so important for us? Because of Bhagavad Gita. There Krishna gave Arjun the advice in the form of Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters. First chapter is describing uh, that how Arjun became overwhelmed with emotion. <coughs> that seeing that he is very, very dear, intimate, relatives and friends and now he has to kill them. How could he do that? So here again we see the nature of a good person. A good person in the greatest difficulty doesn't give up his noble character. Mm -hmm. Like they have been deprived, they have been humiliated and in spite of all that he is reluctant to fight. And not only he was deprived and he was humiliated, he had been forced into this battle. But still Arjun is reluctant to fight. So this is how we can see uh, the nature of a good person. And this is how we also can learn how to shift it a little bit. Yeah. How to become good, how to follow the right advice, right nature, right example. So <clears throat> Arjun is uh, bewildered here. He's decided not to fight and he was telling God Krishna various reasons why this battle is not desirable. 
Arjun even said that I would rather become a mendicant and survive by begging. But I don't want to enjoy this kingdom stained with the blood of my relatives. So at that time, when Arjun actually surrendered to Krishna and told Krishna, Krishna, please tell me what I should do. I am completely bewildered. Karpanna dosa apahata sabhava. Prichami tvam dharma samhura cheta. Dharma samhura cheta. I became completely bewildered about my duty, dharma. And please instruct me because I am surrendering myself to you as your disciple. All this while Krishna was silent. But when Arjun surrendered himself, then Krishna started to advise him. And that is uh, what constitutes the Bhagavad Gita. That's what Bhagavad Gita is. Krishna's advice to Arjun in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. In Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna started to speak, Actually, here we have to understand what Krishna is giving through Bhagavad Gita is the highest spiritual understanding. Mm -hmm. Highest mm -hmm. spiritual wisdom. Arjun was overwhelmed with grief that how could he, how can I fight this battle? where I have to kill my huh, worshipable superiors, my friends, my relatives. And Arjuna is thinking in that way because this battle is a serious business. It's a matter of either you kill them or you get killed. There is no other way. The third way can be to, re to leave the battlefield. But for a Kshatriya it's even worse than death. So he has, in, like, so he has to kill them. If he doesn't, then he'll be killed. So, huh? in that condition, uh, when Arjuna is lamenting due to his uh, grief, then Krishna started to advise him. The first advice that Krishna gave is. Arjun, there was never a time when you and I and these kings here who are not there and there will never be a time when, they, when we will not be there. So this is the first lesson that we have to learn. This is the first lesson that Krishna is giving in Bhagavad Gita. Now when Krishna says like that, there was never a time when we didn't exist and there will never be a time when we will not exist. That means we have always been here and we will be here. Now what actually causes, what is uh, the, the lamentation here for? Arjuna's lamentation here is for the body of his relatives. Body. But what actually lasts forever? What? Who was there before and who will continue to be there after? The soul. So this is how Krishna establishes the first principle. The difference between the body and the soul. And then Krishna pointed out that, look, this body is just like a dress. Just as when the dress becomes old and worn out, you take off that new old dress and put on a new one. Similarly, when this body becomes old, we discard this old body and take up a 
So what's that to have interpret? To begin with, there's nothing to have interpret. Say, for example, if somebody comes and tells you, uh, get rid of your old car and we'll give you a new car. What will you say? Will you cry? No, 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 I don't want to get rid of my old car. What if somebody comes and tells you that get rid of this old dilapidated house and a new house is waiting for you. What will you say? Do you have to think twice? <laughs> then why are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so now let's take this to the same, let's apply the same principle here. What if someone comes and tells you that get rid of this old body and get a new one? What will you say? Huh? No? <laughs> no? No? The same one, new one. The misery will be the same. Oh, wise man. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> anyway, I think everybody will go for a new one. <laughs> because they're not as wise as you are. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so this is the nature of this body. And this is the real understanding. Now just tell me, how many people in this world have this knowledge? And did we have this knowledge before we came across Prabhupada Bhagavad Gita as it is? No. no. Now after receiving this knowledge, did it make a big difference? Yes. So, just see the first instruction, just first two lines of Krishna's advice make so much sense. Then Krishna is establishing the nature of the soul. The soul is never born. Who is born? The body. When the body is born? When the soul accepts a new body. When the soul accepts a new body, we call it birth. And when the soul leaves the old body, we call it death. So birth and death is for the body. Soul is beyond that. It is the presence of the soul that makes this body alive. Otherwise, how can this body be active, conscious and alive? Because can matter be active? Matter by nature is inert. Matter by nature is, is uh, yeah, in, say it's coming the same point actually. Inert, from the world comes inertia. That is inability to move. So that is the nature of matter. By nature, matter is dead. But how come this body made of dead matter is alive? Because of the presence of the soul. As long as the soul is in the body, the body is alive. When the soul leaves the body, the dead body becomes dead again. Isn't it this body is made of dead matter? So isn't it a dead body? Hmm. This body is a dead body. Because the presence of the soul, the body is alive. So when the soul leaves the body, then the dead body becomes dead again. And then Krishna pointed out that the soul can never be cut by Sukhaya. The soul cannot be cut by weapons. The soul cannot be burnt by fire. The soul cannot be drowned by water. Soul cannot be withered by air. So this is how, this is the nature of the soul that Krishna established.
And in this way, in the second chapter, Krishna actually extensively speaks about the nature of the soul. Then uh, Krishna goes to the third chapter describing the duties of the soul. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> so I'll just select a few verses, we'll just go. Mm -hmm. In the third chapter, Krishna is pointing out how one should act in this material nature. Mm -hmm. Actually, at the beginning of the third chapter, Krishna was, Arjuna was asking Krishna that Krishna, in the second chapter, Krishna spoke about karma and Krishna spoke about uh, jnana, knowledge. And then, Arjun questioned that Krishna, in one hand you are asking me to be active and at the same time you are saying that jnana or sankha is the better. So how can I understand that of these two, karma and jnana, which one is more important? Then Krishna actually pointed out that there, there is no difference. When the proper action is executed, that leads to liberation from this material bondage. Anyway, then eventually Krishna is coming to the point that How one should act? Here, at the, in the third chapter, Krishna is speaking about Karma Yoga. And this Karma Yoga is uh, not complete Karma Yoga. It's initially speaking about Jagya. Now, Jagya is uh, something like, performance of Jagya is something like paying the price. Mm. You get something and for that you have to pay the price to uh, the owner or who is the supplier, uh, price to the supplier. So in this world, uh, the demigods are supplying whatever we need. Say for example, we are getting light. Who is supplying the light? Sun God. We are getting water. Who is supplying the water? Varunte. We are getting wind. Who is supplying the wind? We are, we are getting fire. Who is supplying fire? So this is how different demigods are fulfilling our various needs. Now if you get something from them, like you get some facilities, then don't you have to pay the price? Like, say, let's go back to this similar example. The state is supplying electricity. What do you have to do? Just keep on consuming electricity and not worry about it. You have to pay the bill. If you don't pay the bill, then the supply will be cut. You're getting supply of water. And at the end of the month, you get the bill. If you don't uh, pay the bill, then what will happen? The supply will be cut. Supply will stop. So now you consider you are getting so many things from nature. Who are supplying them? The demigods are supplying them. And therefore, they should be paid the bill. Eventually Krishna is of course pointing out that the demigods are working on his behalf. Uh, therefore, whatever is supplied to the demigods are actually coming to him. Mm. Like, say, the electric supply department is getting the payments. 
Now, does the electric department take 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 up the whole thing, or they pass it on to the treasury of the government, central? So similarly, first consideration is that whenever we get something, we have to pay for that, and ultimately that payment is going to. And <clears throat> in that way, Krishna pointed out that this thing is called a jagya. The paying the bill is the jagya. How do we pay? By performing jagya. By performing jagya, we please the demigod. But ultimately, where does it go? Krishna. Therefore, Krishna is saying, "Jagyarthat karma no andatra." You function, you act in order to perform jagya. Otherwise, your action will be the cause of your bondage. Lokoyam karma bandhana. Why? That if you don't pay. Uh, or if you don't do it for Krishna, then you have to um, suffer the reaction. And suffer and becoming liable to the reaction is the cause of bondage. So in simple words, when we act for Krishna, then we become free from bondage. But if we act for our own sake, we will generate karmic reactions and these karmic reactions will tie us down to the material nature. So action to Krishna becomes the cause of our freedom from bondage or action for our own sake or for our own sense gratification becomes the cause of our uh, bondage. So Jagat, therefore Jagarthat Karmana Annatra Lokoyam Karma Bandana. Otherwise you'll become cause of bondage. Tadartham karma komteya mukta sangha samachara. Therefore act in this way and you remain unaffected. You remain free. <clears throat> then Krishna makes one point uh, that how do people live? How, how are we living? What is the uh, one of the most important factor for our survival? Food. Jagarthat karma natra, I'm sorry, annad bhavanti bhutani. Living entities survive by eating food. And Parjalnad Anna Sambhava. Food grains are grown due to Parjana, due to rain. Is it clear that due to, like few years back, there was drought in Australia and everybody was in anxiety. Why? Because there won't be any food grain. Now it is, of course, they're sub bringing supply from different other places. But still, can you get food in the middle of the desert without being transported from some other part of the world? Why? Because there is no rain. So, Parjanad Anna Sambhava. What causes the rain to fall? Jagkar Bhavati Parjana. Rain takes place because of sacrifice. Therefore, Jagya Karma Samud Bhava. Therefore, act for the sake of performing Jagya, which means for the sake of Krishna's pleasure. So, in this way, Tasmad Ashakta Statatam Karjam Karma Samacharo Ashakto Hi Acharan Karma Param Apnuti Pusha. In this way, by acting properly, 
one becomes free from the bondage of this material nature. And <coughs> then gradually uh, Krishna instructed about how to become connected to the Lord. The process of becoming connected to the Lord is called yoga. And Krishna perform, establishes that, you know, how this particular yoga, which is called Ashtanga Yoga, is performed. And then he is saying that there are various kinds of activities that give us spiritual benefits. Like one is Karma Yoga. One is Tapasya, austerities. One is acquiring knowledge of the spiritual world, spiritual reality. So Krishna is saying uh, that Tapasya Bhyodhiko Yogi, a yogi uh, who is engaged in establishing his relationship with the Lord, he is superior to a person who is performing uh, austerities and penances. Tapasibhya adhika yogi. Karmi bharscha adhika. He is superior to the karmis, those who are uh, involved in fruitive activities. Gyani bharscha adhika yogi. I'm sorry, the second one is Gyani bharscha adhika yogi. And the third one is Karmi bharscha adhika yogi. So anyway, uh, a yogi is superior to uh, one who is performing austerities, one who is cultivating knowledge, spiritual knowledge, and one who is uh, involved in fruitive activity. Therefore, he is saying, Tasmad yogi bhavarjuna. Therefore, Arjun, you become a yogi. But then, Krishna is saying, Joginam Opi Sarvesham, of all the yogis, Madgate Nantaratmanaha, one who has become engaged in my devotional service, he is the most intimately connected to me. Now, why this connection is necessary? That has been explained by Krishna also very nicely. After giving the ex advice of Karma Yoga, Krishna told Arjun, Arjun, I gave this knowledge to Vivashwan, Sun God. Then Vivashwan gave it to his son Manu. Then Manu gave it to his son Ikshaku. And in this way, in a chain of disciplic succession, of saintly kings, this knowledge was flowing. But now I am imparting this knowledge unto you. Because you are my devotee and you are my friend. So Krishna told you, mind you, what did Krishna say? I gave this knowledge first to who? Sun God. So where is Sun God and how many years ago he was there? Was he uh, from today's time? So many millions of years ago, billions of years ago. So that's what Krishna asked, Arjun asked Krishna. That Krishna, you were born just the other day and Sun God appeared so many millions of years ago so how can I understand that you imparted this knowledge to Sun God? Hmm. Aparang bhavato janma. Aparang means recently. You are born recently. Param janma vivasataha. But Vivashan was born so many uh, billions of years ago. Kathametad bijani an tamado praktavaniti. How can I understand that you gave this knowledge to Vivashwa? Isn't it a, a relevant question? 
So then Krishna told Arjun, Bohuni me bhatitani janmani tavacharjuna. Many, many times you have been born. So did I. But Tani Aham Veda Sarvani, about all those births, I know everything. But you don't know anything. So in this way, Krishna is establishing the difference between Arjun and him. Arjun is a spirit soul and Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then Krishna pointed out that I don't need to take, I don't take birth. I don't take birth. I manifest myself. Krishna when he comes here, he doesn't come here by taking birth. But he comes here uh, out of his own sweet will by the arrangement of Yogamaya. So in this way, uh, Krishna established his identity and then Krishna pointed out why he comes. And that we discuss time and time again. Paritrana sadhunam, vinashaya dushkritam, dharma sangsthapanarthaya samhavami in order to re-establish dharma, I come juge juge. Hare Krishna. So, uh, I thought uh, as a part of this seminar, <coughs> we'll discuss Bhagavad Gita, uh, which is the most important aspect for us. And <coughs> So, if anybody has any question, can ask. Maharaj, you said uh, uh, Bhima was... Uh, Arjuna, uh, Duryodhana gave poison to Bhima and Bhima went to Pataloka. Does that mean that Pataloka is part of this planet or this some other planet? Yeah. This is not this planet, but this universe. The universe has 14 planetary systems. We are in one planet called Earth planet, Bhuloka. And above that, there are six higher planets. We are in Bhuloka, above that is Bhubarloka, Swarloka, Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, Sattaloka. And below us, there are seven planetary systems. Atal, Bital, Sutal, Talatal, Mahatal, Rasatal, and Patal. Okay. So, yes, Arjun, I mean, sorry, Bhima, when there, was carried by the river you know, into that region. So, uh, you explain that um, uh, Pandavas are the devotees of Krishna. And in yesterday's session when you described all Subhadra's kidnapping by Arjuna. So now, that time we didn't know that he is uh, doing a wrong thing by kidnapping Supreme Lord sister or his... Well, he had the approval of the Supreme Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Supreme Lord wanted him to do that. Krishna is too. Balaram is arranging that. Don't worry. You just kidnap her. <laughs> Uh, there are innumerable universe, so every universe has got 14 planetary systems or what yeah. is the universe? Every planetary system has the same geography. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think. Um, is it that we, we don't perform um, Yagyas so much as uh, is contemplative? Because we try to surrender to Krishna, and so we don't need to surrender to the demigods or thank the demigods. Is that why? We are performing Jagya all the time. Yeah. Because the real Jagya is chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra called Sankirtan Jagya. And that is the most powerful Jagya and most effective Jagya. Sometimes, you know, I think it was in uh, Brisbane, yeah? Yeah. like there was no rain. 
So we just decided to have a Harina to get the rain. We didn't even have to go out and chant. Maybe we did, but when he decided, it started to rain. <laughs> so this is the power of Yajna, yeah? Sankirtan Yajna. Yeah. So I think this is what we discussed today, but yesterday I think we spoke about how Krishna um, went to Panchajanya, the Kansha, but then in the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that Krishna blows his conchal called the Panchasanya. Is there a connection? Between yeah, them? right. He then took that body of that conch, uh, that shell, and he made it his conch. Yeah. Yeah. Hare Krishna, any other question? Yes? Uh, normally when, when there's festival days or you know, big days, uh, we fast and that's a type of sacrifice as well. So, um, but as, as Maharaj explained that, you know, the moment the Hare Krishna mantra is much more higher. So uh, what is the significance of the fasting then? When you fast and chant Maha Mantra, Maha Mantra becomes even more powerful. <laughs> <laughs> Actually Prabhupada wanted us uh, to celebrate a few occasions by fasting. That is the days when Krishna appeared. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. So the Vishnu Tattva's appearance days, we generally fast.